new track called Format. It's 14 minutes past nine here on Kiwi. Well, I'm very chuffed to be um, launching a brand new feature here on the show. We're going to call it, well, it's a working title at the moment, um, On the Box, On the Radio. I say On the Box because Chris Philpot, um, who's my guest for this feature, uh, writes a column in the, um, on the Stuff website, stuff.co.nz. It's called On the Box, where he talks about tally. And um, he's been doing it for a year now, um, just over a year, which is uh, which is really great. He's really established established himself over there. Good day, there, Chris. Hey, how are you? And of course, joining us from um, Fongas up north as well. Fongaray, yeah, yeah, the good, the uh, the last bastion before you hit the north. <laughs> That's <Good>. right. <laughs> um, yeah, so on the box, been running for a year now, and 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 um, you you do almost do a daily blog about what you've been seeing and what's coming up and that sort of thing, right? Yeah, it's about four or five times a week, um, and I just kind of cover what's been on New Zealand TV. We steer clear of um, American shows that haven't been on. Um, but we we just, yeah, I just talk about what's been on, what's happening on the TV. Usually it's in the format of a review. Sometimes it's a bit different. Um, today I reported back on a pub quiz that I went to last night. Right. So, yeah, actually, just something a bit different. Yeah, actually, is that, worth, um, is that worth talking about the pub quiz? Because you were having a bit of an experiment with that. <laughs> I was. The idea was from the TV show Nothing Trivial, the Kiwi show that's on on Wednesday nights, 8.30 on TV1. Yeah. And the premise of the show is that they go to the pub quiz every week and the questions um, kind of tie back um, into their own lives. So I went to a pub quiz last night to see if that actually happened in real life. And it kind of did. It was half a success, but yeah. it wasn't a full success. Okay. Um, but there was a couple of funny moments. So, yeah, check out the blog today and you'll see see the results. Also talking about um, what's up at stuff.co.nz, let's dive into into the news. Um, there is an article that suggests that um, quality news is perhaps the daily show and it's better journalism than anything else that's out there. What do you, what do you think? Yeah, it's come out. There's a US, uh, what's, he's described as a media academic, Marty Kaplan is his name, and he's come out and suggested that the best journalism on TV is actually coming out um, through The Daily Show, John Stewart's uh, parody news show. It's kind of a satirical comedy show on Comedy Central, but he suggests that um, because to get the jokes on The Daily Show, you actually have to understand the news that they're talking about uh, on The Daily Show. Yeah. So what he's saying is that John Stewart explains it in a lot more detail than the actual news. Like He gives a stat here, which is um, like an a average news... Uh, coverage on a news broadcast is only about a minute and a half, whereas it will get six to seven minutes on the Daily Show mm. and covers off the different angles. So what he's suggesting is that um, the Daily Show should be considered a proper journalism show, which yeah. is kind of a funny idea because it's a comedy show as well. Well, I, I mean, so I'm, I've got to be honest, I'm a, I'm a big Daily Show fan, and whenever I do yeah. see it, um, and mainly I have to I catch it online because I don't think you can even see it on New Zealand TV now. Is that right? Is it, is it playing? No, it's, it, they... They show the Daily Show International Edition, or whatever it's called, yeah. uh, as well as the Colbert Report uh, International Edition, only once a week on Comedy Central. But you can mm. download, or you can view all the episodes on the Daily Show's official website. I mean, I certainly get a good snapshot of what is going on in, uh, in, in U.S. politics from from the Daily Show, and, and and mainly because he incorporates all those clips from various news sources, um, and yeah. often, of course, taking the piss out of what Fox Fox News is doing, and then putting it in a funny way, but also explaining exactly what um, what is going on and, and sort of the story behind the story as well. And I think the other factor as well is that they only have a limited amount of time each day, so they don't get into all this other news footage and news stories that aren't important. The ones they go after are the really big stories and the important stories. Yeah. So in a way, it's kind of aside from just keeping up with the news, you're kind of keeping up with the important news. Yeah. I guess if you're an American viewer especially, you would be, because um, they do do coverage of, you know, oh, this is what's happening in the U.S. Senate. Yeah. I don't understand the Senate system even. So. No, that's um, right. Some of it can go but, a little bit too deep. Yeah, that's right. But mm. it, it's the important stories in America at that time that they're covering. Mm. Um, and, and I think it probably does have a lot of value from that perspective. Indeed. Well, let's focus on um, TV back here in New Zealand. There has just been the um, finale of The Castle, which I can't say that I, a show that I've um, kept up with, but um, you're a fan? Yeah, I'm a fan. It's um, Nathan Fillion, who, who your listeners might know from Firefly, um, where he played Captain Mal Reynolds. He plays Rick Castle, a novelist, who is working with the NYPD 
solving crimes under the guise of doing research for his next book. He's a novelist. And but actually he's there now because he's in love with the cop. Yeah. And um, and for anyone watching the live video stream, there's actually a little bit of the finale. But um, I mean, was it a show that um, that really captured you? That you really enjoyed? What, what I mean, what what was the hook? I, well, I I just like it. It's good light entertainment, and it's interesting. And there's a real good comedy element to it. Like a lot of these procedural shows, they try and be funny, and they're just not. Yeah. Like you know, it's that kind of oh yeah, ha ha yeah. There's a joke. Good. But Castle is legitimately laugh out loud funny at times, um, and I think that's what gives it its kind of point of difference. Um, and I mean, it helps that Kate Beckett's one of the more attractive uh, ladies on TV. Yeah, yeah. But you know, it, it is just light entertainment, and it's an easy watch, and it's every week you know what you're going to get, and it always delivers. Um, and was it a satisfying con- conclusion of season three? The finale episode, compared to the rest of series three, um, I think. Like, where it's got a really light tone through most of the series, the finale was a lot more serious and a, a really intense finale dealing with um, a kind of longer arc story to do with Kate Beckett and, her, and the murder of her mother some, you know, 15 or 20 years earlier. Um, and, and what happened was it was a lot more serious, but it ended on a really bad cliffhanger. Now, I, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but what they did was that the last scene of the show, yeah. they had one of the two main characters on the show get shot and kind of implied that she's died. Huh. And it's a really hollow move because it, they never kill off the main characters on TV. Yeah. It's one of those predictable things, you know, and, and there's a stack of, of um, examples. Like, I'm, are you a Battlestar Galactica fan? Huge Battlestar Galactica fan, but I came late yeah, to like, it, w- watched it all on DVD at the beginning of this year. Mm. Yeah, I, I did the same thing last year. At the end of series one, Adama gets shot by Boomer twice yes. on the chest. Yes. And they kind of imply that he's dead, you know? Yeah. And then series two starts, and no, he's recovering, he's fine. Um, Hotch, who's the main guy from Criminal Minds, same thing. End of season four, he got shot, and then season five started, and he was fine. Yeah. Um, and it just happens again and again to the point that now when a, when a main character's in grave danger, you almost can't take it seriously as if you. <laughs> yeah. It's just this. You know, oh yeah, they shot her good. Which you know, actually, we'll which actually um, leads us very nicely um, onto the next thing we're going to talk about, and here's a little bit of a teaser. I've lost my family, everything that I care about. I didn't marry a criminal. She's not going to tell a living soul. I told you, I'm not using ever. I just want back into the business. Yes, it's the feature on the show. Um, it's the stuff that we shouldn't be uh, we shouldn't be talking about. Um, it is <laughs> Breaking Bad. Um, yeah, and, if, you, if you're listening right now, don't tell anyone that we talked about this. <laughs> yes, and um, and also spoiler alert as well. There um, there will be some spoilers in this next section. So if you um, haven't caught up on Breaking Bad season four, which is a screening in the states, but of course available through um, all kinds of methods here in New Zealand, then um, you might want to tune out right now. Now the reason why I said that followed on nicely from your talk about um, about characters getting shot or not getting shot or being seriously injured um, as a cliffhanger that happened at the end of season three where you've got G.C. Pinkman pointing a gun at, um, at Gale um, at the end of season three and you don't know if he was going to shoot him or not, do you? Well, it, well you don't, but you find out pretty quick at the start of season four. Mm. Um, Indeed, we, I mean, we, can say, we can say, spoiler alert right now, he shoots him, right? He shoots him in the head. Yeah. So, Absolutely. So and, Ga- and Gale then is runs dead. off. Yeah. Which led to, I mean... That first episode, I, I'm, I assume you're up to date with Breaking Bad, six episodes in yes, there? Yes, yeah. Um, that first episode with, um, what's the guy's name? Gus. Gus, the main guy, who he comes in and finds Walt and Jesse, and he's got his guy Mike there yeah. down in the lab, and yeah. he comes in with, just grabs a box cutter, and it's this kind of quarter of an hour long scene where he comes in and doesn't say anything, just walks around the place menacingly. And the tension. With box cutter. The tension just is the building. Tension and then he goes and cuts the throat of one of his own cronies. Yeah. It, it, and it, it really was just a riveting 
episode of television. It was brilliant. Yeah, I, I, I think, I think, I think we're both agreeing that that um, with with uh, sort of Game of Thrones off at the moment, and um, you know, great series like uh, The Wire and Sopranos out of the way. Um, mm. This is the best thing on TV right now. Yeah, I, I think it's the best thing on TV right now that you can get. Um, the only other show I could think of would be Louis, which is a comedy show that I'm watching. We might talk about that next week. Yeah. Um, but I think it's the best show on TV right now. And I would actually go further. They talk about the big four, which is Breaking Bad, Mad Men, The Wire, and The Sopranos as yeah. being maybe the four greatest shows of the last 10 years, if not ever. Yeah. And I just six episodes into series four of Breaking Bad, I wonder if we're witnessing Breaking Bad becoming the best of those four. Oh, big I, call straight I, out of the box. It is a big call. <laughs> yeah. Because um, I'm, hu- like, I'm a huge Wire fan. I, I think The Wire is maybe the greatest show ever made. Yeah. But right now, I think Breaking Bad might be giving it a run for its money. And it's be- it, would, you, would you say it's because it's consistently, right from the first series, right from the, f- uh, from the first episode, the tone and the story... It hasn't really strayed. It hasn't um, jumped the shark as some series do. It hasn't um, gone silly or anything. It is still. It still keeps you on edge. It is still tough, um, and and the and the characters are still compelling. And in fact, some characters who may may not have grabbed you in the beginning get deeper. I'm, I'm thinking uh, Jesse Pinkman. He's a character that's really evolved, and you start to really like him, and you want him to stick yeah. around. Because I heard um, that early on they were thinking about killing off. G.C. Pinkman, um, his character. There was, some, there was some talk that he was going to end up um, being killed halfway through this series, but I don't think that will happen now. He, it, I mean, G.C. Pinkman, the character, the actor who plays him, Aaron Paul, is just, he's a phenomenal talent, and it's shown by, he won the Grammy, uh, sorry, not the Grammy, the Emmy Award for Best Supporting Actor in a Series. Yeah. Um, and it's just, the cast is loaded, as you say, and the characters, you know, people that you didn't think would be main factors are now jesse's an example skylar white is an example now who's playing a much more prominent role this year um and in a different way than she has in years past um hank is another character who in series three became a much more interesting character and that carries on now yeah um and it's just it's a really good show but i think the consistency comes from this idea that the show is built around one premise which is um we're watching the like the the devolution, if you like, of Walter White as he turns from Walter White, the pathetic um, science teacher, into Heisenberg, this ruthless, powerful yeah. drug kingpin. Um, and, and that's what the show's built itself around, and, and that's where everything goes on that. You know, Walt said in the latest episode, it's all about me, was a quote. Oh, and that's it gets kind of dark. true of the show as well. Yeah. It's true of the show. Yeah, Walt Walter is getting darker and darker. Um, we, we should... I, I love the... I love the scene. Sorry, with, in this week's episode, he was talking to Skylar, and she implied that maybe he was in danger. And he said something along the lines of, you know, a guy knocks on a door and gets shot, and you think that of me. No, I'm the one who knocks. Yeah, yeah. You know, got right in her face. And I just thought, this is uh, brilliant. We're, what, this guy is turning into the ultimate villain. And I'm, it's, I'm it's the one who knocks. Well, they have um, 16 episodes after this series in, in order uh, in which to wrap up. Um, the whole storyline, AMC, um, even though um, the show is reasonably pop- popular, apparently it's not as popular as Mad Men, um, you know, which I guess they're going to measure a lot of things against. But they have given it 16 yeah. episodes, which is quite a, a long run for for a final season. That'll be season um, five. Looking forward yeah, to season that. Season five. So we've got nine left. Yeah. Um, I think, is it nine or seven left in, in this series? So we'll be up to 23 or 25 episodes to go. And before we and, go... And can- it's- be riveting. Yeah, before we go, can you um, uh, just give us a couple of things we should look out for on our TV screens in the next week? Um, well, I, I was thinking about this. One that I'll be checking out for sure is on Sunday night on One, um, they're showing Bliss as part of the Audi New Zealand season um, of Sunday theatre productions. Bliss is the story of Catherine Mansfield, of course, the famous writer, um, her escape from New Zealand at age 19 and how she got into writing. Um, and it, it, I think it's just an interesting story. The end, the out in New Zealand season um, has just been really good so far. They had Tangy Wai a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Billy on the weekend just gone, the story of Billy T. James. And this one should be another really interesting story from New Zealand's history. Cool. Um, and then just in line with Billy T. James being there, um, Comedy Central's showing Alive and Gigging, his return show uh, that he did, I believe, in 1990. 
uh, it may have been 1991. Uh, that's on Comedy Central on Monday at 8.30. So okay. that's something else I'll definitely be tuning in for because I was only 15 or, uh, sorry, 10 or something like that yeah. when it was first on. Oh, so it's good. it'll be interesting to see what that's like. Good to have it a uh, second time around. Well, um, uh, you can go and check out uh, Chris's blog over at stuff.co.nz. It's called On The Box over um, in the in the uh, entertainment section. It'll be over there. Um, well worth checking out. And, of course, um, find this video once more up at kiwifm.co.nz. Thanks very much, Chris. We'll talk to you next week. Cool. Thanks, women.